kaibigan! Welcome again to In My Two Box, your weekly talk show on personal finance. Of course, dito lang po sa PHLV Radio. Ang goal po natin dito sa show is to give you financial information that uh, will be able to make use of it on a day-to-day financial decision. Siyempre, we will unbox the topics that will hopefully aid you and guide you and even add to your financial tools. And we will tackle important information mostly not taught in school but so much needed to empower you financially. As usual, mga kaibigan, in any idea that will transpire uh, in the show, always consult with your financial advisors, insurance professionals, or tax consultants. Again, my name is Enrico Pobre, your host. Uh, I'm a sales, marketing, and trainer, an economist, an entrepreneur, and a financial professional. So, mga, mga kaibigan, if you have questions, ask them away on the chat box below. Or if you will be listening to this show on a later on or a later time, please feel free to connect with me um, through Facebook. Um, the address of the page is in my toolbox. Connect with me via Instagram or LinkedIn. Or simply just Google my name, Enrico Pobre. Lalabas po lahat yun doon. Or you can email me at enrico.inmytoolbox at gmail.com. Ayan naman mga kaibigan. So what we're going to talk about today, of course, mga personal financial tools pa rin tayo. And of course, we need to uh, give a little bit of understanding of what we're getting into. Yun naman yun. So for this week or for this episode, ang pag-uusapan natin, Long-term care. Ayun. Hindi po long-term. Okay. Long-distance lava. Pero hindi po ganun yun. <laughs> okay. LDR. You know, long-distance relationship. Hindi po ganun yun. Long-term care. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So, ang long-term care is, um, is a very, very serious topic. In fact, you know, not only that long-term care can talk to you about yung, yung emotional aspect of it, the physical aspect of it, basically financial aspect of it you know there's a lot of things that that the long term care uh, you know should go uh, that that's the reason why that we need to go over it so what is long term care ni ko alam kunarinig niyo na yon um but then again there is such a thing as long term care and it should be part of your personal financial tools okay so ang long term care daw it's a variety of services yung Mangyayari that will help meet both the medical and non-medical need of people like, you know, chronic illness or disability of a person who cannot take care of themselves already for a long period. Ibig lang sabihin, if you are not able to take care of yourself already for a long period, may it be a medical or not medical, that will talk, that will tackle long-term care. Okay, so this is a person when when they require someone that will be able to aid them, uh, you know, on a physical or emotional need, gaya na sabi ko kanina, over an extended period of time. So, yun po ang long-term care. So, ang, ang, ang long-term care kasi is very, very crucial yan, especially pag, ano, pag, pag medyo may umiida tayo, you know, it can happen. So, syempre, help will be required for many of the activities of a normal person needs. Ha? Kasi pag right now, if you don't need that yet, eh, you don't know that yet, you know, and you don't even know how it feels to be in that position. So, minsan, active people may take even for granted, you know, for all of these things. I'll give you an example, and I'll give you a list of examples of these activities that someone may not be able to perform in the future. So, for example, walking. What? You know? <laughs> yeah, walking. You know, syempre, pag pagtanda natin ng konti, okay na, disabled tayo, you cannot walk. Definitely, you need somebody to aid you. Bathing. You know, papaliguan tayo. <laughs> Hindi mo na kaya maligo. Oh my God, ano ba tsura natin pag di tayo naligo na sampung araw? You know, bathing, you know? So, um, you can also um, get help for dressing, using the bathroom, you know, helping with incontinence. Ito yung mga... Uh, active people doesn't even doesn't even uh, uh, probably believe that it can happen in uh, you know one day managing pain pag may may sakit you know masakit ang katawan ma, you know uh, masakit ang paa di ka na makalakad you know preventing uh, unsafe behavior this is mental naman you know preventing wandering you know yung alam naman na natin yan you know pag nagkaroon tayo na medyo hindi na tayo makapag uh, alala 
you know, na, na, para tayong natutulero, you know, we need help on that. Providing comfort and assurance, that's emotional need. Providing physical or occupational therapy, PT or OT, kailangan natin yon. Attending to medical needs or even counseling is part of that. Feeding, can you imagine, you know, some people cannot even feed themselves. So, kailangan natin ng assistance noon. Um, answering the phone, as simple as answering the phone. You know, if you need assistance on that, you know, that's another, that's another activity that, that, you know, some people may need in the future. Removing snow, you know, oh, naku, napakahirap yan. Naalala ko na nakatira ako sa, ano, sa, sa Ireland. You know, I lived there for a long time. Magplow ng, ng snow, naku, napakahirap. Nung tumira ako rito sa Amerika, I used to be in Virginia, Nako, napakahirap ng snow. Can you imagine that also? Of course, you know, someday you cannot even do that. Ako nga eh, nakakapagod na. But some people are not able to do that. Meeting doctor's appointment. You know, just just before I um I came here to the show, kanina, um, I, uh, I was with a, with a client and I I went to the uh, to the uh, sa kanyang doctor's appointment because I had to do some 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 signatures. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, we can uh, or we need to bring uh, some people will need them, you know, to, to bring them to a doctor's appointment. You know, providing meals, of course, you know, pagpaprepara ng, ng, ng food natin. That's, that's another thing that uh, active people may take it for granted today. But, you know, a lot of people cannot even do that in the future. Maintaining the household. Paglilinis ng bahay, that's another thing. Um, shopping and running errands is another thing. These are our daily activities, guys. That in the future, one person will actually be needing it. Providing transportation. Oh, I've seen a lot of those, you know. Dahil, um, dahil nakikita naman natin dito sa Vegas, you would see a lot of those AMR, yung mga transportation. Isa yun, you know. Providing transportation, administering, um, administer, uh, administering, the, administering um, medications, um, um, managing yung kanilang finances is another one. Paying bills. Uh, doing the laundry. Sino may gusto dyan? Sino may hilig maglaba? <laughs> Pagdating ng panahon, kahit anong gusto mo na maglaba, hindi ka na rin makapaglaba. You know? So, attending to uh, personal hygiene. Ito yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina, even bathing. Eh, hindi naman po pwedeng hindi tayo maligo. No? O hindi naman tayo po pwedeng malinisan yung sarili natin. That's personal hygiene. You know, helping with personal grooming. Isa rin, isa rin yun. Writing letters are as simple as writing letters or notes or making repair to the home. Another thing, maintaining a yard. So, marami ito sa mga daily activities natin that, you know, one day, eh, hindi na natin mape-perform. So, ang question dito kasi, if you're not able to perform those activities already that you normally do, eh, sino ang tutulong sa'yo who is going to be taking care of you? Kanina, I mentioned you all of those lists kanina. It means so much more, guys. You know, It can be, again, what? Physical. It can be emotional. Yun yung, ito yung mga type of care that someone actually will be needing in the future. I mean, I'm not saying that it's you, but the chances are, which I'm going to be talking about later on, you know, it might be you. So the question is, what are you going to do today? To help yourself when the time comes. So, why do we need long-term care? As I've been telling you a while ago, the need for long-term care uh, uh, or a long-term care help um, is due to a terminal condition, disability, illness, injury, or the infirmity of age. Kasi pagtanda natin, talaga naman, darating at darating, manghihina na tayo, you know, and it's part of, of life, you know? So, Kaya kailangan natin ng long-term care. That's the reason why long-term care is needed. Well, probably in the Philippines, you know, um, a lot of people there are growing old. Um, you know, well, I don't even know if we don't if we if we do really have a, a long-term care products there. But what I'm trying to say here is because in the Philippines it's a different scenario. Even your neighbors can take care of you. You know, so you know, and 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 another reason why we need long-term care. Kasi sabi nila, the estimate of an expert, at least daw, ah, sabi ng expert, at least 60 to 70 percent of all individuals, of all, ha? Hindi lang sa, 60 to 70 percent of all individuals will need an extended help when the time comes. You know? And all of this are, you know, some of the list pala, 
were, were the list that I mentioned to you a while ago. So, ibig sabihin ko, 60 to 70 percent, that's 7 out of 10 people. So, what are the chances are of, of, of that, uh, of that uh, uh, percentage, will you fall on? Nasaan po ba kayo? Nasa 70% or the 30% that doesn't need it in the future? By the way, yung 30% na yan, eh, it doesn't mean that you don't need long-term care. Eh, it, uh, you know, uh, you're still alive. You can also be dead by then. You know? so, kaya ko lang sinasabi dito, bigger percentage when the time comes, you know, it's, uh, we, all, we will all be needing long-term care. So the need for long-term care may only last for you know, a few weeks or months. Pero some long-term cares can go last years. It depends on, of course, underlying conditions. You know, so kailangan natin man, um, um, we have to put it into our financial plan right now. Who's gonna take care of us when the time comes that we need help? You know, so the need talaga ng long-term care. You know, it's going to be due to all of those things that I told you: terminal condition, you know, disability, and etc. Sabi nga dito, meron tayong mga tinatawag na, na longevity of the long-term care needed by people. Number one, pag-usapan natin, temporary long-term care. Oh, meron naman temporary long-term care. So, itong temporary long-term care na ito, um, the need for care can only last for what? Weeks or months. Diba? So, um, gaya ito ng mga um, rehabilitation sa, from, a, uh, from a hospital stay. Yan. May kli lang yung mga panahon na yan. Or when a person recovers from an illness, yon temporary ang tawag dyan na long-term care. Um, recovery from an injury, of course, is, is another one. Temporary din ang, long, ang, ano natin dyan, ang, ang long-term care. Recovery, again, for a sur- from a surgery. Oh, so, temporary din yan. Kailangan din natin ng long-term care. Um, yung mga terminal medical conditions, kaya rin naman nangyaring te- um, temporary yan. Eh kasi maikli lang naman kasi terminal na yung medical condition nung, nung tao. You know? So, yun yung tinatawag natin mga longevity, ng, na different longevities ng, ng long-term care. So, yun, temporary yun. Yung isa naman, it can be an ongoing long-term care. So that can actually run for a few months. Ang, ang example of this one, it could be a uh, chronic medical condition. That, that's one. If you have a chronic medical condition, it can be a what? An ongoing long-term care. Kailangan lang, tuloy, 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 tuloy lang yan. A person that has chronic severe pain. You know? So, ano yan? Ongoing yan. Lalo na yung mga chronic pains na yan. Minsan, konting ganun lang. Tapos babalik na naman. Konting ganun, babalik na naman. Chronic severe pain. Eh, hindi ko alam ang heartache dito, ha? Kung kasama dito. <laughs> heartache. Chronic pain. Susko, ano ba yan? Permanent disabilities. Yun. Ongoing long-term care din po yun. Susko, naalala ko na naman yung heartache na yan. It's a heartache. Parang ganun, ano? <laughs> Okay, hindi po kasali yan mga kaibigan. Eh? Okay, dementia, yun. Dementia is an ongoing long-term care. Um, Siyempre, again, it will may last for, for, for months or years. Ongoing need for help with activities of daily living. Take note of that later on. Eh? ADLs ang tawag doon. If you have an ongoing need or help for the activities of daily living, yan, ongoing pa rin yan, for months or years, um, need for, 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 for supervision, pag hindi mo na talaga, ano, uh, pag hindi mo kakayang maging independent, that you need to be having a, uh, somebody to supervise whatever your, your activities of daily living is, yan, o- ongoing long-term care. Okay, so, there are long-term cares naman, the services that can be provided by by um, yung mga kusaan ginagawa no kusaan ginagawa yung yung long term care it can be provided by uh, in pala in the in a home of the recipient pwedeng pwedeng do sa bahay ninyo pwedeng pumunta diyan to provide the long term care pwede yan you know or in the home of a family member or a friend of the recipient pwede naman ikaw, kalimbawa, ikaw yung recipient ng long-term care, pwede mo naman tong gamitin, punta tayo sa bahay ng, ng anak mo o sa bahay ng kaibigan mo, pwede rin yun. Pwede naman din kasing um, uh, the, the long-term care can be provided by an adult daycare service. Pwede siya. 
you know ko iba ibang location naman yan you know probably if you if you have that um, probably you can google it ano yung location sa malapit sa inyo that has an adult daycare service you can have an assisted living uh, service as well or facility um, this is what you sh- sometimes you call this the uh, the board and care home you know so pwede yon or you can have a hospice facility to take care of you especially na for people who are terminally ill they bring you to a hospice facility or even in a nursing home yan naman yung iba-ibang ano um, providers ng long-term care that you can actually use okay so naintindihan na natin guys ano so again again ang long-term care is not just um, um physical it can also be some emotional you know <laughs> Pero again, you know, hindi ko alam kung heartache, tanong natin <laughs> kung po pwede yung heartache. Anyway, so po pwede natin siyang, uh, again, may sinabi tayo yung, yung, how, yung longevity niya. It can be a, uh, it, can, it can go from, from weeks to, to a month or, you know, or months. Or it can be months to years depending sa severity ng, of course, ng care na, uh, na, 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 na situation mo. So that's the kind of care that you will be having. And this can be provided in those areas a while ago that I mentioned. Okay. So Enrico, ano ba itong mga, ano? Ano ba itong mga naririnig ko about uh, types of care na meron tayo? So you are so right. There's what you call a skilled care. You know, ang skilled care daw kasi... Is this is this is these are for patients who have uh, who has a need for a high level of nursing care, but do not the same but do not uh, need to have the same degree that is given to an acute care. So magkaiba yung acute. <laughs> Teka lang, hindi pa cute, okay? Acute, okay? Um, uh, then the nas- the then the nursing care magkaiba po siya. Etong program na to. Um, it requires the direction of a physician. Kailangan meron 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 physician is going to be taking care of you, and somebody is managing you like you know a professional professional nursing um, uh, or a professional nursing staff and other healthy members that that will be available 24 hours a day. Yan yung yun yung category ng skilled care. So it's a type of care. Dira tawag don skilled care. Medicare and Medicaid din naman po set up a certain guidelines for this level of care. Pero just for you to understand, medyo high level of nursing care ang kailangan natin dito. Pero hindi pa naman siya yung acute na care na tinatawag natin. So, when the patient no longer meets the criteria, eh syempre, dinidischarge na po siya o tinatransfer na po siya sa assisted or, or a skilled care coordinator. Yun na, doon na natin siya nililipat. Yan yung tinatawag nating skilled care. Okay? So, ang ano, ang benefits naman ng ano ng skilled care is very simple. Kasi sa skilled care, meron ano yan, there, there's more flexibility during the, uh, uh, the the need of care in the hospital setup or um, lalo na pag kailangan nila ng hospital staff and of course the facility that I was mentioning to you about. Of course, kailangan natin yan yung mga yung mga staff and the facility kailangan yan um, na meet yung yung standards ng healthcare need. Tapos dito rin, this is of course, you know, it promotes continuity of care by providing acute and skilled care. Yun yung benefits ng mga mga ng mga mga skilled care, you know. And then of course, the next one is it allows patients and families to become involved in the establishment of health related goals. So if you guys have a um, a skilled care uh, uh, relative, it allows them, you know, yung mga relatives natin to to help dito sa pagpapaalaga sa inyo. Very good. So, ang sabi rin dito, it provides um, uh, immediate access to professional nurses, physician, and em- emergency care. Kasi nga, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, is skilled care, ito yung tinatawag na medyo high level. So, of course, they will need as their benefit they will be needing, of course, professional nurses, physicians, and emergency care. Kaya nga siya high level. Okay? So, ito, ini-involve the, the physicians, the hospital staff, family members, the clergy, the community volunteers in providing clear care to that skilled care patient. You know? Siyempre, kailangan din natin dito physical, psychological, social, and spiritual well-being. Yun yung, yun yung, yung binibigay ng benefit of a skilled care. And of course, dito rin po sa skilled care, it assists the patient 
and family in evaluating post-hospital needs. For example, ano, yung tao ay uh, um, uh, na, nasabi na terminally ill na siya and it has, he has to go to a, uh, 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 a facility called hospice. And ito naman ngayon, pwede din tayong matulungan with regard to the discharge planning process. You know, naanjan din mo. You know what benefits of my skilled care. And of course, maintains a familiar environment for the patient and the family. Ang tinatawag dito familiar environment, at least closest to home, closest to a, uh, 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 a family care, yun yung, yun yung ginagawa ng, ng skilled care. Yun ang benefits nila. Saka yung, ano, yung, yung skilled care uh, program sa community medical centers, e eh, intended lang ito for short term and rehabilitative in nature. Kailangan short term lang tapos rehabilitative in nature. Yun naman talaga ang dapat ng skilled care. Tapos yung admission ng skilled care is dependent on acute care census and projected admission. Ang ibig lang naman sabihin dito, tinitingnan lang naman ang level of skilled care na kailangan ng patient. You know? Skilled care is designed to be a short-term, rehabilitative, and patients and families can take part of it. Yan yung mga benefits of a skilled care. So, a type of care, is a skilled care. Okay? Ang isa namang type of care na pinag-uusapan natin dito, ang tinatawag dito, custodial care. So, magkaiba po yon. Yung kanina, diniscuss ko sa inyo, yung higher need of, of a care, of a health care, is a skilled care. Ito naman yung susunod, is what you call a custodial care. Ang custodial care, or in short, ito naman yung opposite, syempre na skilled care, non-skilled care naman ang tawag dito. You know, it helps the person or the patient with the activities of daily living. Ang tawag dyan, activities of daily, daily living or ADLs, such as, you know, ito, bathing, dressing, you know, and, um, and eating. So, ang custodial care is caregiving, okay? Custodial care is caregiving provided alongside skilled services, such as those, syempre may mga items dyan na, it will be ordered by the doctor. You know, so this type of care kasi can vary based on the setting, either yung, yung, yung care provided is going to be at a home or it can be a nursing home or where a, uh, where a place that needs to have a uh, nursing assistant you know, or um, a, a care that can be provided by your loved one. So yan ang tinatawag nating custodial care. So sa tingin ninyo mga kaibigan, if you have somebody or it it's you, where do you think you fall on? The skilled care or custodial care? So nakikita na natin ang difference niya. So ang, ang naidadagdag, what we can actually include on custodial care, um, it actually includes personal care such as bathing, dressing, using the toilets. Ito yung activities of daily living that I was trying to mention to you a while ago. Now, when the care is provided at home, Okay, so when the patient said, oh, um, you know, I want it to be provided sa bahay, you know, it may include not only those activities of daily living, it can be include, you know, meal preparation and light housekeeping, light housekeeping lang, ha? Naalala ko tuloy, you know, itong mga nakarang araw, eh, yung anak ko, eh, nagbakasyon, pumunta ng Virginia, you know? Ako nag-ayos ng kanyang mga, ano, uh, mga mga dog chores tawag <laughs> so hindi kasama yun sa light housekeeping okay <laughs> okay etong naman custodial care is provided because your loved ones okay usually naman ganun lalo na tayo mga Pilipino di ba alagaan naman ako ng anak ko parang ganun o alagaan naman ako ng apo ko okay eto naman yung custodial care kaya siya meron just in case your loved ones is unable to do the job safely. Oh, yan ang ibig sabihin. Ibig sabihin, they're not fit to do the job for you. Kaya tayo may tinatawag na, na custodial care. Otherwise, it should be okay pag nasa bahay, di ba? So, ang, ang custodial care uh, for you know is a help from some people that stay at home, pwede rin yung as long as possible. That's also okay. And this includes those who are, uh, who are frail, have a challenging physical ailment, pwede rin yun, of course, you know, or suffer from even Alzheimer's, pwede yan sa custodial care, or kahit anong type of dementia, 
pag nangangalimot kalimot na ng konti dyan, you know, actually, hindi naman konti lang, malala na, you know, Alzheimer's or any type of dementia, you can actually include that as part of the custodial care. Ayos ba tayo dyan? Kanina, I was mentioning to you guys about um, ADLs or activities of daily living. So, activities of daily living, tandaan lang po natin ito, anin po yun. There are six activities of daily living. Bathing, you know? So, bathing, getting into a tub or a shower. Kailangan, kung hindi mo na kayang paligon sarili mo, that's one of the activities of daily living. Number one. Number two, dressing. Ibig sabi, hindi po to dressing ng manok. Ha? <laughs> okay. Dressing po, ibig sabihin, pag, pagbibihes natin ng damit. Putting on necessary item of clothing. You know, including undergarments and any uh, necessary braces, fasteners, or even artificial limbs. That's part of dressing. Pangatlo, transferring. Ibig sabihin from moving from one place to the other, like getting into bed, go, uh, you know, getting into a chair or a wheelchair. You know, that's already transferring. Number four, toileting. If you cannot do toileting anymore. Continence, hindi mo na mapigilan, okay? Eating is also one of those six activities of daily living. Now guys, if you cannot perform two out of these six activities of daily living, it triggers already long-term care. I'm going to talk to you guys more about that later on. I just want to make sure guys that you understand what the ADLs are. ADL stands for... Activities of daily living. Ito yung usual nating ginagawa araw-araw. And there are six of them. Very good. So kanina, we were talking about the type of cares. So there's two type of cares. The skilled and the custodial. Naalala nyo po, no? So, ang skilled care again, just to give you a uh, um, the difference between the two, you know, are medically necessary. Naalala natin kanina, you know, high level of health care. So, ibig sabihin ng skilled care, it is medical necessary. And of course, it just, you know, you just don't do it because it needs a doctor or a medical profession to approve somebody that needs a medical attention. Okay? So, and of course, these are provided by, you know, meron tayo dyan, sa Medicare, um, by uh, uh, you know, approved professionals um, na ina-approve ng Medicare such as of course nurses, therapists you know, and, and of course they, they work for a Medicare certified organization such as a nursing home do natin ipoprovide yung care ito yung mga to, mga to, these are all skilled yan ang, yan ang, yan ang papakita, pinapakita ko na the difference between the, the two no? and skilled nursing services includes yung, yung needs such as wound care meron tayo dyan part ng ano yan ng skilled, ner- ng skilled care um, injections tube fittings catheter changes so these are all part of the skilled care gets that then ano? again ang skilled care is what you call a medically necessary so na health uh, na health care. Okay? So, ang isa naman is the custodial care. I'm just gonna go back to that again. So, you'd see the difference. Ibig sabihin naman ng, ano, ng custodial, it is non-skilled. So, basically, eh, hindi naman natin pwede sabihin ng hindi rin medical, medically necessary, but it's a non-skilled. You know? And, of course, it offers help on the six of activities of daily living. You mentioned natin kanina. Again, it can be provided by non-medical staff. Pwede yon, you know? Um, pwede rin naman siya yung mga certified nursing assistant. Pwede siya. It can be um, a CNA, kung baga tawag natin sa mundo natin, you know? We're Filipinos. We're, 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 we're actually very exposed to uh, medical field. So, pag sinabing CNA, we already know that. Oh, I know what CNA is, right? So, um, it can be the, the custodial care can be provided by a CNA. And please note, mga kaibigan, Medicare, again, Medicare and other insurances will not pay for custodial care even if they pay skilled nursing care. You know, so yun lang naman ang difference niya. Okay, gets natin mga kaibigan? Alright, so ngayon mga kaibigan, um, total na pag-uusapan natin ang Medicare. Eh, ano ba tong Medicare na to? <laughs> you know, so matagal na siguro na. We probably have heard about Medicare for so many years and um, too many times during a lifetime. You know? So, noong 1962 kasi, si President uh, Kennedy tried to uh, introduce a health plan. 
Okay, it, they, he actually tried to introduce a health plan that will cater or a health care program that will cater for adults. That is going to be used or you know, we are going to be using or he's going to be using the Social Security contribution. Ginawa tinry ni ano ni President Kennedy yan. Nga lang ang problema. <clears throat> During the time, eh, hindi na aprobahan ng Congress. Yun ang naging problema doon. Okay, now, in 1964, eh, si President Johnson naman, ang ginawa niya, he really pushed that to the Congress so to create a program that is already planned by uh, by Kennedy at the time. Thus, ito naman yung naaprobahan yung Medicare. So the program was signed into law no 1965. So at least konting history lang ano. So ngayon mga kaibigan, over 50 years old na ngayon ang ating ang ating Medicare. Sorry about that. So um ito naman ngayon ang mga sumusuporta sa mga American families na na tao dito na lalo na yung mga nagso-social security na right after retirement. Okay? So Medicare is a federal thing. So, sa buong bansa yan. So, it's a federal health insurance. Now, for people who are over 65, okay, pang 65 years old, and people that has disability, okay, it can be younger, you know, basta meron silang disability, na meron itong mga taong ito na merong end-stage renal disease na pwede na rin mag-avail mag, mag ng Medicare. Okay, mga kaibigan, so yan po ang ating pinag-uusapan ngayon about Medicare. Since I mentioned a lot of those kanina about Medicare, I just want to give you an insight of what Medicare is. Although in our previous episodes, pinag-uusapan na natin ang Medicare. No? So syempre yung mga Medicare na ito, yung Medicare uh, Part A, Medicare Part B, Medicare Part C, Medicare Part D. Ito yung mga iba't ibang klaseng uh, um, uh, na nagpo-formulate ng Medicare natin. So, just to give you, you know, an idea lang, um, just to add on, Medicare Part A, of course, you already know, it covers inpatient hospital stays. You know, so yan ang Medicare Part A. Yung Part B naman covers the doctor services. Okay, so yung Part C naman is a type of Medicare na pinoprovide ng mga private company na para bigyan ka ng 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 care of course <laughs> sa Medicare that 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 can be provided by Part A and Part B. Ang Medicare Part D naman is all about your prescription drugs. Just this is an overview. We talked about that long time ago, but definitely um, in the near future we will go over again Medicare. Now, so mga kaibigan, yan lang po yung pinag-uusapan natin about Medicare. Um syempre Pag i-differentiate natin yung Medicare sa ka-long-term care, yung pinag-uusapan natin, the thing that we're talking about tonight, the difference between the Medicare and long-term care, Medicare, take note of this, guys. Medicare doesn't cover long-term care. Okay? Yung tinatawag na custodial care. Okay? So, isa pa, yung most nursing home care, alam na natin yon are all custodial care. Most naman. So yung ano yung yung skilled nursing care in a skilled nursing facility as well you know is also a long term care. So well I just just uh, I just gave you an idea uh, a little bit of the difference between the two. Of course if I may uh, if I will be you you know start um talking to your financial professionals, you know, um, uh, talk to them about what the difference of Medicare and long-term care is. Do you actually need long-term care, etc.? But the reason why we're talking about here tonight is just to give you an idea of what it is that we, what, that we need to plan on, especially, you know, when the time comes. Okay? So, meron din po tayo tinatawag na iba't ibang long-term care. There are different types of LTCs or long-term care. Number one, we mentioned about that, you know, the care that's being provided in where? In an assisted facility living. Itong assisted facility living, of course, it's just like, like, like your house, you know. It's a residential setting that has a combination of yung housing, um, support services when you need services immediately, and of course, health care is being provided especially for the elderly person or people. You know, so meron naman tayong tinatawag, we also have what you call another type of a long-term care facility or provider, a continuing care retirement community. So this is also a residential care setting na meron siyang independent living. So a person is able, you know, 
Um, of course, it can be also be an assisted living. And meron siyang skilled nursing availability on-site do sa facility. So, tawag doon, Continuing Care Retirement Community. So, you see a lot of those, in fact, you know, na mga residential community na nagpo-provide ng, of course, ng housing, ng, ng kanilang, pero independent pa rin sila. So, that's what you call a Continuing Care Retirement Community. The other one is a nursing home. This is very popular. Especially amongst us Filipinos, because we are so fo- we, we are so exposed to this type of cares, right? Especially, madami sa atin na sa medical field. So, ang nursing home kasi is a place of residence of people who require constant nursing care. So, if a person needs constant nursing care, syempre, ang diretsyo natin is to nursing home. And of course, they have, they have to have, you know, significant deficiencies Nang activities of daily living. Remember the six activities of daily living that I was talking to you about. Again, it triggers the policy. If you cannot perform two out of the six, definitely you already know that you have significant deficiency of the ADLs. Now, meron pa pong isa dito, tinatawag na home care. Ang home care naman is a care delivered sa bahay. Sa bahay ninyo. You know? So, to support with people with, with the instrumental activities of daily living. Instrumental activities of daily living. You know, ito yung mga activities of daily living na, na, na kailangan. I mentioned that to you a while ago. Or limited skilled care. Pwede nang gawin yon sa loob ng bahay. So, ito po yung ating types of long-term care na po pwede nating ma, 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 ma avail is assisted facility living, continuing care retirement community, a nursing home, or a home care. Ayan, mga kaibigan, ha? So, if you think that this is something that you are trying to contemplate now because you're in that position, definitely consult with a person, a financial professional, that can, you know, discuss with you your options. Now, if you're still young, the more that you have to learn this, kasi, again, the chances is what? is huge chance that you and me can actually fall into the long-term care um, category. So, kaya po natin pinag-uusapan siya ngayon. So, it doesn't really matter how old you are at the moment, and you have to make that as part of your financial planning. So, question lang again, eh, who qualifies for long-term care? Kanina, tinitignan natin yung mga triggers. Ano? Let's just go deep, uh, a little bit about it again. So, ang, ano, ang triggers of the long-term care, or who qualifies for long-term care, I mentioned that to you a while ago, is very simple. The six acti- activities of daily living, if you don't if you don't perform two out of the six, definitely you qualify. And new activities of daily living again, bathing, continence, dressing, eating, toileting, and transferring. So ibig sabihin, if you don't do, if you cannot perform two of those six, it triggers the policy. You qualify for long-term care. Okay, medyo ramdam-ramdam tayo ng konti dyan. <laughs> Pakiramdaman natin, ano ba ako, you know? So, if you are not able to perform two of the six, you can qualify for long-term care. Now, sino ba ang... Who needs long-term care? Again, I have a question to you guys. Who do you think needs long-term care? Correct ka <laughs> Everyone needs long-term care, especially to prepare it, you know? So, 70% of people over 65 years old, year old, years old will definitely request for a long-term care service. Definitely, you know? It's either, Kanina, I asked you, are you, are you the lucky 30%? Who doesn't need it? Or are you going to be the 70% that will need it? And 40% of people receiving long-term care are aged, guess what? 40%, ah, 40% of the people receiving long-term care, guess what? Ko anong age? 18 years old to 64 years old. So 40% of those people who are in need of long-term care, eh mga bata rin pala, no? Eight, as, 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 as young as 18 years old. So, eh, even young people, mga kaibigan, even though you're young, eh, you're super buff, you're so super healthy, you know, this is statistics, guys. You know, it can happen to anyone at any time. Yun naman ang ating pinag-uusapan. I, I'm not here to scare you guys. I'm just actually here to tell you the what long-term care is and what the studies are. Okay? So, again, we were talking about that kanina. Who qualifies for long-term care? Now, ito naman. Ang tinatanong naman dito sa, sa, sa next na ito is, is also a uh, something that should be an eye-opener. Baka daw, you are insuring um, the wrong risk. 
Or in, to cut the story short, are you ensuring the right risk? You know, binaliktad ko lang, you know? <laughs> Sige. So, ito yung odds. Bibigay ko na sa inyo yung odds. And, and you have to think about this one, guys. So, in a car accident, the odds of having a car accident is actually 3 out of 900. Again, the odds of having a car accident is 3 out of 900. Hindi 9, ha? 3 out of 900. So, in short, the chances of getting a car accident is 0.33% only. Okay? So now, the odds, uh, the odds, the odds of getting a residential fire, masunog ang isang bahay, the odds of getting a residential fire is 7 out of 900. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nun, that's 0.77%. That's the odds, guys. Okay, again, ang odds of being admitted to a critical care, okay, pag ikaw, uh, you need a critical care, ang odds nun is 21 out of 900. So, out of 900, 21 doon ang odds. So, so ibig sabihin, 2.3% ang odds nun for a person who will need or who will be admitted to a critical care. Now, ito pa isa. Sa long-term care, ito yung topic natin ngayon. What are the odds of getting a long-term care? 630 out of 900. Narinig niyo ako mga kaibigan. You heard me, right? 630 out of 900. So it's actually 70% that will need long-term care. So mga kaibigan, if that's how, the, uh, the, how high the odds are, kailangan natin mag-prepare for long-term care. Kasi very simple lang naman yun. It's very simple. If you will be needing long-term care when the time comes, who's gonna be taking care of you? Oh, Enrico, yung asawa ko magte-take care of sa akin. Oh, that's very good. At least you have somebody to take care of you. And what if the time comes, it's not exactly how you thought it would be. It was the vice versa. Who's gonna take care of her? Oh, ako magtatrabagta take care of herself. That's very good. And what if kayong dalawa naman ang may kailangan ng care? Who's gonna take care of you? See? So, that's the reason why instead of, 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 of looking for an excuse of not doing it because you think that you have someone, you might want to prepare it today. Yun lang naman ang ibig sabihin na mga So, another thing. What are the odds of a person being dead someday? And 900, uh, you know, uh, in 900, so ibig sabihin 100% we're going to be dying, right? So, yun po ang ibig sabihin, are you ensuring the right risk? So, yan po ang very, very important natin maintindihan, guys, that, you know, we have to understand how life it would, 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 would be, and we have to position our finances as well when the time comes. Speaking about finances, so, Enrico, how expensive it is to have a long-term care. In fact, that is very, very valid reason, you know. Kasi dito, the world's population kasi, today, you know, in today's age, is actually um, getting, is actually getting fast than ever before. You know, kasi, ang, ang, ang longevity ng buhay ng tao ngayon, today, alam naman na natin ito because of technology, technological advancement, you know, it's actually longer now. So, every day until 2030, 10,000 baby boomers will turn 65. So, nandun pa rin tayo ngayon, ano? So, every day, every day to ha, araw-araw, 10,000 people here in the U.S. are turning 65 years old. And 7 out of 10 of those people will require long-term care in their lifetime. So nakikita na natin yung mga numbers. Eh kanina, balik tayo dito. Magkano ba ang long-term care? So, eto let's talk about cost lang ha. Uh, eto as of ano to? As of 2021 itong numbers ito. So, sa home health care, naalala natin ano, somebody goes to you, you know, home health care. Sa homemaker services, $4,957 a month. <laughs> Ayan na. Ito, medyo nabibilokan. Napapainom ako. Teka lang ha. Diyan lang kayo. 
That's how much it is. A homemaker services, 4957 a month. Home health to, ha? Ito naman, homemaker health aid naman. $5,148 a month. Who has extra $5,000 a month for that type of a home health care? Di ba? Okay, let's go to adult daycare or health care. So an adult day, adult day health care is $1,690 a month. Kung baga, dadali mo lang siya, tapos kukunin mo ulit, $1,600 a month na siya. E pambahin na nat, uh, you know, that's already a, uh, a mortgage, right? So, assisted living facility or assisted facility living. So, ang private, one bedroom, private ha, one bedroom, $4,500 a month. Private one bedroom yan. Ang nursing home care naman, <clears throat> again, alam na natin to, when you, you know, you only need nursing home, when you, of course you need a uh, professional nursing um, care, so, ang semi-private room ng isang nursing home, as of 2021, okay, $7,900. <laughs> ka talaga ako. $7,900 a month. Ang private room naman niya is $9,000 a month. Let me ask you right now. Today, how much are you getting as a salary? <clears throat> Can you imagine that? Now, not a lot of people are earning that and you are still able to work today. When the time comes that you need this care and you're being charged that amount of money, I, I don't know, guys. How are you? What's your plan to make sure that you are financially able to provide to yourself that type of a care? You know, pinag usapan natin dito, and so much more. You know, you can, in fact, um, if if I'm if if I were you guys, I would be trying to uh, <clears throat> to uh, to look for Genworth Financial. Maggoogle lang po kayo dun. The numbers are all there. You will see. So you you can actually start from there and thinking about planning about your long term care. Ayan. So mga kaibigan, yun lang naman. You know, that's all the things that uh, we're going to be talking about uh long term care today. And of course, just to uh, before I end the uh the the show about long term care, ito lang yung bridging the gap. So what do you need, you know, what do you need to be able to to bridge the gap? So we already know that there are needs that you know that we will be having when the time comes. And um, you already know the cost of how much you're going to be paying for today lang eh, for 2021 lang yung numbers natin, you know? So what can I do today to bridge the gap? You know, so if I were you guys, sit down with your financial professionals and talk to them about what is a standalone long-term care. Okay, so there are products out there, guys, that can actually help you prepare that plan that you need to have when the time comes. Or, meron naman tayong what you call life insurance policies that has living benefits inside their policy already that can bridge the gap of that problem today. The living benefits covers, you know, chronic illness, critical illness, terminal illness, you know, and some, 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 some other companies offers injury as well, critical injury. But what I'm trying to say is, there is a solution for this type of a problem. So mga kaibigan, ha? So hanggang dito lang po tayo, mga kaibigan. Um, again, I hope you guys learned something from our um, topic today, long-term care. And again, my name is Enrico Pobre. Of course, mga kaibigan, lagi po tayo every Thursday until our next episode. Magandang gabi! Thank you so much! Woo!